Well, hello, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I'll be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Bluehawk. Last night, we talked about choose not to serve. And if you look at it honestly, and just getting down to the bare bones of the thing, our masters are these pharaohs, these sun gods, these uh, gods on earth as they think of themselves. They've never made a pot of coffee in their whole lives. They've never stood in line at the bank waiting to deposit a check. They've never handled cash. They've never used an ATM machine. They've never stood in line at the grocery store in the 10 items or less line behind somebody with, you know, 20 items. They've never walked into a Target and bought new underwear. They've never gone to the dry cleaners to have their soup pressed. They've never made themselves a meal. So what gives them the right to tell us how to live our lives? If they don't know anything about us, they aren't us. We've talked about in the past how our masters are a completely different form of life than you and I. And this really gets down to it. I mean, how can someone like Ben Bernanke, someone we've never heard of, never seen before, tell us where our money is going to go? Have they ever gone to the movies and stood in line to buy tickets and popcorn and a Coke? No. Our masters are parasites in, in the strictest possible terms. Here you have people who are worth hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. And yet without us, they couldn't figure out how to get out of their own bedrooms. They couldn't wash their own clothes. They couldn't find their own socks. These are creatures, people, parasites. Without us as servants, without us as slaves, they would starve to death while standing in their own kitchen that's full of food. They would starve to death because they've never cooked an egg in their lives. Without us, they cannot live. So why are we afraid of them? Why are we doing their bidding? Why are we listening to them? They don't know anything about our lives, how we live, how we survive. And without us, they would starve to death, surrounded by food. So why, why are we doing this? Show me the sense. Where's the reason? What is the purpose of a parasite? It's certainly not helping the host. These parasites, and there are so few of them, why do they control the Western world? So when I say choose not to serve, I don't mean go to war. I don't mean protest. I don't mean anything other than choose not to serve. Barack Obama picks up the phone, calls for his morning coffee. Don't take it to him. Ben Bernanke wants his suit pressed. Don't do it. Barack Obama wants to be driven to a convention where he can tell people how godlike he is. Don't show up. Don't say no. Don't pull out a gun. Make the conscious choice as a man, as a woman, as a human being, and choose not to serve. Join the military. You need, you need the money. That's fine. Get sent to Afghanistan. That's okay. Refuse to shoot anyone. Choose not to serve. If you work at a bank and you happen to find the uh, Rockefeller Trust Fund account, which is worth hundreds of millions, perhaps trillions of dollars, money that has been stolen from us, choose not to serve. Take that money, give it back to the people of the United States who it was stolen from. Hire lawyers to sue these people, these creatures. Hire policemen 
to arrest them. Hire jailers to put them in prison and keep them. Hire construction workers to start rebuilding our roads and our bridges and our infrastructure. Start hiring teachers to teach our children and, hell, teach us. Choose not to serve. You don't have to go to war. You don't have to pull a gun. You don't have to argue. All you have to do is make the conscious choice as a man, the conscious choice as a woman. Choose not to serve. And these creatures, these parasites without us, at their beck and call, will starve to death in a room full of food, if they even know where the kitchen is. They can't drive. They can't use a phone. They can't use a computer. They can't cook. They can't shop, and they're telling us how to live. Isn't that kind of strange? And so tonight I thought we would chat about no civil war in America, because civil war is just another excuse for these parasites, our masters, to turn us against each other. A civil war in the United States, which is why I keep saying to you, no war, no violence. Just don't give them a reason. Our masters, these parasites, these very, very few people, creatures, they want an excuse to be able to call the United Nations military into the United States. They want us to rise up and demand our rights. And if we do it with violence, our masters would be delighted. Our masters revel in violence. They, 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 they think of violence as the way you and I think of dessert. You know, you get through the meal, that's fine, but you're waiting for dessert. Like little children um, having to eat their lunch first and then they can have candy. That's how our masters see violence. It's hatred, cruelty, pain, horror. To our masters, it's, it's ice cream and cake. Now, no civil war in America. Is this even possible at this point in time? Frankly, I'd, I'd have to say no, to be really honest with you, because I saw the United States of America, the Constitutional Republic, die December 2000. And I yelled and I screamed and I begged and I pleaded and I reasoned and I talked and nobody listened. I saw a constitutional republic die December in the year 2000. It was replaced by a zombie, a corpse flopping around, pretending to be alive. Something that's now called the United States of America Incorporated, a privately owned offshore corporation that was a constitutional republic which is now a corporation. Is it possible not to have civil war in America? Yeah, I suppose, if we actually stood up and remembered that we were human beings, that we were men, that we were women. If we stood up as one people. And again, you don't need violence. You don't even need uh, dissent. All you have to do is make the conscious decision not to serve. Make that conscious decision to turn your back and to walk away without a sound. Because you know, and I know, I hope, that trying to reason with a liar is a waste of time. A liar lies. And no matter how desperate you get trying to make a living, when you deal with a liar, you're just wasting your time. It fills up your time. It takes a lot of time of your day. And you feel like you're accomplishing something, but the truth of the matter is you're not. You're just occupying yourself because there's nothing else to do. I know this from personal experience. Sadly, I um, was conned um, by a guy into writing, quote-unquote, his story about his time with the CIA. He, of course, was not a survivor of the CIA horrors. He was actually an active participant, one of those um, 
six sad little creatures the CIA likes to uh, recruit and um, use as a time bomb. This is what this fellow is. It was a waste of my time, and I wasted months and months of my time with this guy. And when it became very apparent, he was just a liar. A lot of what he was saying was true, but in the context of the fact that this 50-year-old man was actually just a five-year-old child pretending to be grown up, it was a tremendous waste of my time, and I kept hoping against hope since I hadn't had a job now for six months, a real job in four years, that this might amount to something. It can't, because he's a liar. Our masters are liars. So to go to engage a liar in a conversation, a discussion with the hope that they will stop lying, is foolish. Don't talk to them. Don't fight with them. Don't pull a gun on them. Don't discuss it. You know the truth. They're liars. There's only one thing you can do with a liar, and that's to walk away. It might help you, and this is just a thought, if you actually read the Declaration of Independence. It's not very long, and there are not very many big words. And I don't say that to, um, well, I was trying to think of a nice way of saying I'm trying not to make fun of you. The fact is that our masters stopped educating us at the turn of the last century. And it's not our fault that you know we can barely read or write. It's not our fault that we can barely speak our own language, let alone anyone else's, because knowledge is power. The written word has power, and our masters know that. And if we can't even read or write, we are powerless. But get some friends together. Get a copy of the Declaration of Independence and just read it. It'll break your heart. I tried uh, reading the Declaration of Independence on my last uh, TV show. It took me two weeks of trying, and I still cried on camera. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because our founding fathers, even though they were Masons, and Masons' definition are magicians, people who practice magic. Our founding fathers, they understood the nature of the universe. The universe is electrical. It's energy. And as we know, anyone who's grabbed a hot wire and been shocked knows that electricity flows. Now, were our founding fathers, if they were magicians, which they were masons, so yes, they had to be, did they worship Satan? That would be the natural question at this point. And as I said, my answer would be, gee, I hope not. I don't think they were because they were in open conflict and stood against the Catholic Church at that time. And it was actually against the law in the United States for a Catholic to be president up until, I think, 1930 or something. Uh, JFK was our first Catholic president. He was our, actually our only, our last president, a real president. He actually cared about us. But you see, the Holy Roman Catholic Church is just a, the, the latest version, the updated rebranding of the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire was simply the, at that time, the latest up, updated rebranded version of the ancient uh, Egyptian Empire of slave traders. Nowadays, companies, corporations change their names, change their logo, and they become so corrupt and so hated by the public that they just can't do business anymore under that name, so they rebrand. Well, uh, our masters are the direct descendants of pharaohs through Constantine. So the Egyptian Empire, slave traders built on slavery, you and me, they rebranded. They couldn't do business as the Egyptian Empire anymore, so they rebranded. Changed location became the Holy Roman Empire. After a while, um, that wasn't working really well, you know, publicity-wise. They had to rebrand. They had to change their name. This time they stayed in the same place. 
So the Holy Roman Empire, under the last emperor, Constantine, became the Holy Roman Catholic Church, under the first pope, Constantine. Today, the Holy Roman Church, the Vatican, is its own nation. It has a seat at the UN. Whenever you go on to the property of uh, the Catholic Church, anywhere in the world, including the United States, you're on foreign soil. You're actually on Vatican soil. So when uh, the local Roman Catholic priest starts raping little children, guess what? He's got diplomatic immunity because he raped those children on um, foreign soil. These are our masters. And of course, from the Holy Roman Catholic Church, we got the Jesuits. The Jesuits, the Jesuit order is the oldest spy assassination infiltration organization in the world. They basically covered the world, stole all the knowledge of all the cultures everywhere in the world, destroyed any traces of that knowledge, except for the originals that are stored at the Vatican today. The CIA is sort of the uh, Kmart version, the watered-down version of the Jesuit order. But our founding fathers, the guys who created the United States, knew this and stood against the Catholic Church and said, no, you will have no power here. So they knew evil. So I would say our founding fathers were Masons. They were. They were magicians, but I'm guessing they were good people. And so when you read the Declaration of Independence written by these men, well, Thomas Jefferson, but same thing, you'll see real magic. It's unbelievable. And reading the Declaration of Independence is a really good idea right now because we really can't afford civil war in America. We cannot afford to give our masters what they want, which is, of course, more hatred. We have to choose not to serve. No violence, no guns, no weapons, no dissidents, no riots. Because that's what the masters want. Don't give it to them. They're liars. Don't talk to liars. A liar is a liar. It's, it's never going to change what it is. Never give our masters what they want. So choose not to serve. If there's a riot, don't go. If there's a war, don't participate. If there's an election, don't vote. You don't even have to say no. Choose not to serve. Let them starve to death in their palaces with all the money they've stolen from us, they can't even feed themselves. So no civil war in America. Choose not to serve. So it is possible. And we may get out of this without violence, without war, without bloodshed. I don't think it's possible. But we can try. An ancient blessing, an ancient hope, an ancient dream for the future, for a good friend or a beloved stranger. May you live as long as you wish. May you love as long as you live. For the 2012fad.com, this is Charlie Pink. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.